this video, I wanna show you how to use sketch symbols to create scalable and reusable components. And not only sketch symbols, but nested symbols and symbol overrides inside of parent symbols to create some pretty cool stuff. So let's dig in. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, open up sketch. Um, and I have a file that I wanna open up just to give you a look at what's going on. So I'm gonna open this file. First thing I like to do when I'm working in a new document and getting into design mode, go full screen, command option T to hide this bar and command option one and two or three for both of these at the same time to kind of get rid of all of the toolbars. Um, but I just wanna show this really quickly and actually I'll keep the layer panel showing so you can see this. So I've just made a, a quick simple kind of like list of people and avatars with the title, description, and you know some type of arbitrary icon, and then also kind of a another standalone version with without an avatar. One thing I want to show is the difference between this list, the one without a list. You can see these list items have this small divider bar. Um, but this one doesn't. This is an iPhone 7, iPhone 7 Plus, and then we have an iPad portrait. And now we have a desktop kind of view. Uh, and you can see the rounded corners on this one and see how these are all stretched. Now this is all one symbol. Everything on this document is based off of one symbol. And to show you that, I've got it uh, li, li slash two line with image and icon. Now the naming doesn't really matter that much right now. I'm not gonna worry too much about the naming. I just wanna show you I just want to show you this symbol. It's made up of this avatar, which I also have another symbol. I've got a border bottom symbol in here. And I've also got the name, the description, and this icon, which is another symbol. So let me just show you if I wanted to make uh, another one of these. Whoops, let me just move this up. If I wanted to make another one of these, I could bring it down and Let's say I wanted to change this image. I could grab one of these pre-selected images I have in here. And I could say, this is a demo. And these are just overriding these text descriptions that are already in there. If you haven't done that before, as soon as you create a symbol with text in it, it will give you these overrides. Um, and I'll cover that in just a second. This is some description. All right. And so what if we want this little icon? Well, let me bring in an icon. Maybe it'll be the little blue trophy instead of the golden uh, ribbon. And in, in fact, maybe I want Michael to have a golden trophy as well. And maybe this one does not to eat, need to have anything and neither does Adele. Maybe only Michael and Ratu have these two symbols. Um, so, th and, and this is all the same symbol. So all of these are, they're different instances. So I could, I could make these the same, um, go in and change these back. If I wanted to make them similar. Um, but yeah, so just check out, like, let's say maybe we want the name and the description over here. So I've got a little 16 pixel trophy. Maybe I draw a 20 pixel, uh, rect uh, not rectangle, ellipse there. And maybe I make this white and I'm gonna bring this thing over here. Maybe this needs to be slightly larger. See, that's 24. Let's make this thing like 32, just so there's some breathing room around it. And now, maybe for some reason, just for, just for demonstration purposes, let's right align this text and put it way over here. Let's see, that's 24, that's 24. All right, so now I'm gonna to return to the instance and you can see that everything is now completely updated 
with the new style. Right align text, even the scaled versions are in place. Um, and even the bordered versions are in place. Now another thing I could do is, you know, now that these are created, the ones that don't have an icon, I could go in and, and make this, this little background piece and this icon. I could create a group and say, you know, icon group and turn that into a symbol. And I could remove the icon group on the ones that did not have it. So that's that's kind of a, a cool way. Like when you create a symbol inside of its symbol, you have the option to override it with none. So that's a neat way to change that. Um, but I'm going to go back, 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 undo all of that work just to get back to the original um, kind of a symbol that we had. Move my text back. Um, I'm going to just show you how to build this the same setup kind of from scratch um, very quickly. All right, so I'm going to take a quick little command control shift four screenshot of this thing. And I'm going to create a new document by hitting command N. And I'm going to hit A for the iPhone 7 artboard. And I'm going to paste this screenshot. Now this is just for reference, just so I can create the same thing. Uh, I'm going to hide my layers for a second. Okay, so this thing is roughly, looks like it's like 86 pixels wide. So I'm just going to draw a square here. And I like to do the command shift nudge uh, technique to get this thing to be the right size. You can also just go in and, and change it there in the properties panel and grab this color, make the background white. <coughs> All right, so now I'm going to hit O to create an avatar. Let's make this thing uh, 60 pixels and I'm going to put this 24 pixels from the edge um, just out of curiosity I'm going to go back to this other one and see what that is so that's a 60 by 60 and the background is 84 okay so let's do an 84 pixel background on that one and just kind of line that thing up. Okay, nice and lined up. Makes me makes me feel good. 12 pixels there, 12 there, and 24. All right. So now I'm gonna say name. Sometimes it helps to start with a regular name, and you can always just change it to be more abstract after the fact. Uh, let's make this thing like. Maybe, no, that's too big. Let's do 20. I think that's what I had. And I'm going to make a copy of that. Hit return. This is some description. Maybe make that like 16. And we'll grab this color, which is like eight five eight five eight five maybe this is regular instead of bold I think that one is bold still but sometimes you just want to change it up um, all right that's looking pretty decent and maybe I'll keep that bold just because the other one was bold looks like that was about 14 instead of one instead of 16 All right, that's pretty good. Now, what I did on these icons is I used this program that I downloaded called Nucleo. Uh, they, it's a really nice little app for icons. You can just search for what you want. Um, you can go solid or stroke um, if you do like a glyph or something. 
Um, I use this a lot for reference. Sometimes I use the actual icons. Sometimes I just use it for reference and then redraw some. Um, but that's what I, I'm going to do for this. So I'm going to make that 16 pixels. And the other one I had was like a ribbon. Make that one uh, 16 height. All right, the way I'm going to do these, the way you want to do these icons, uh, you want to have like a base size to start with. So I had a base size of 16, so I'm going to create this little background shape um, and then kind of position this icon on the background shape. It's kind of hard to see that. Let me darken the background so you can tell that a little bit easier just temporarily. This is going to allow us to align these symbols. Um, this will kind of create, you know, the bounding box for this particular symbol. So I'm going to take this thing and hit command G to group it, command R to rename it. I'm going to call it icon 16 ribbon. Now if you do icon slash 16 ribbon, there's a reason when you go to do the symbol overrides, it will look for the name. Um, don't worry too much about the name because you can always change it in the symbol uh, page. All right, so there's the icon trophy. You can right click or hit create symbol. You can also hit this little icon in the title bar, but the quick key is command K. It's just much quicker. So select that group, hit Command-K. Whatever you've named it there, it will automatically pop in right there, so you don't have to worry about naming it. All right, so now that these are symbols, they've been sent to the symbol page. So I can safely delete both instances if I wanted to, and they would still be in the symbols page. Um, and I'm going to keep one of them to put it in here. And I'll put this thing like 24 from the edge. All right, so now this is starting to shape up. I'm going to change this back to the background color. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to create, so this entire thing, all right, so let's turn this oval into an avatar, and let's rename this layer as title and rename this layer as uh, description or shortened it. And whatever order, whatever layer order you have here is going to show up in the symbol. So I might, I might have the avatar be first, then the title, uh, then the description, and let's call this one the background. So now let's go ahead and group that and call it line item. Um, again, it doesn't really matter what this is called. All right, so I've got line item slash two lines. There's probably a better name, but for this purpose, I'm going to I'm going to leave it as that. So command K is going to turn that into a symbol. All right, so now you can see that I've got some default overrides. I've got title and description because I cleverly named the name, title, and description. So now, usually when this is done, this is when I'll go back in and say, I might say title. And I'll leave it as this is some description. Um, you could also just say description too, because you've kind of already set the design. You've already kind of set it up. Um, and then now this is more of like an abstracted symbol. So now I can go back in here and say Matt D. Smith, put a little uh, description in there. And you could change this one, you know, to whatever. Mm -hmm. And so now because I have icon trophy right here and I named it icon slash 16 trophy, um, sketch is going to look for anything else named similarly. So I've got icon slash 16 ribbon. So I'm going to turn that one into a ribbon. And so it's still the same symbol. Um, so if I move this one over here, you know, both of them are going to change. All right, so now how do we get how do we get those lines if we want to line everything up? You know, how do we get those lines in there and keep it in the symbol? Well, 
let's go back into this thing. Actually, I'll make a couple of copies. I just option. Uh, let's make a couple of copies by option dragging and hitting command D. So now I'm going to uh, go back into this and I'm going to grab the background and hit command D and I'm going to call this module or actually let me call it line item divider. Again, don't get too caught up on the names, just call it something. You can always change it later. And I'm going to put a small um, border. Whoops, not a border. I'm going to do a small shadow on the inside. Actually, I need an inner shadow. And I will tell you why you want to put it on the inside. Let's, uh, we want to put it coming from the bottom. So it's going to be negative. And maybe we make this thing like really light gray. So now I've got this, I, I brought the divider over to here. So it's kind of touching that. This is kind of a standard kind of list item. If you look at any, any of any of Apple's like system preferences or the way they list contacts and stuff like that, they have like the, the picture or the icon and then the line is kind of offset. So this is just kind of following that uh, pattern. So now if I go back and I look at these, you can see that because I put the shadow on the inside, it's you can butt the component right up against another one with zero zero pixel spacing, and it's going to be right there. Um, if you were to put it down the shadow down one pixel and you put it right up against, it would be covered up. Uh, it would look like this, and that's no good with no shadow. All right, so now that we have those, what about kind of the background, the top and the bottom border? Well, I could go into the symbol and put like a full width top border or a full width bottom border, but then I'd have to toggle that on and off for every single symbol. And I really only need to mess with that maybe for like the last symbol. Uh, so what I'm going to do is create a new symbol behind all of this. I'm going to create just a rectangle. Um, I'm going to send it to the back holding command option, the down arrow, and I'm going to temporarily nudge these over. If I, if I select all of these, I can group it and see what the height is. So it's 252. And so that's already 252. So it's actually a good, it's a good size. So I'm going to um, control C, select white. And now I'm going to, I'm going to do a, an actual like outer shadow. So it not, so it's, so it's sticking out past the component as opposed to being covered up by the component with an inner shadow. So the inner shadow, I'm going to go Y equals one. We'll do the same color and I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to copy, I'm going to right click and right in there and duplicate that, and change it to negative one. All right. So now we've got our background. I'm going to put these back over here into place and I'm going to call this module background border top bottom. Again, don't worry about the names too much. This just whatever helps you memorize it. We'll get into naming convention stuff in later videos. All right, so now I am going to make this a symbol by hitting Command K. All right, so now this is looking pretty good, but you'll notice the last symbol here still has that divider line, which is super annoying. And you would never want like the divider line, divider line, and then the divider and the bottom line. So how can we get rid of that? Well, if we go back into this symbol, we can click this line item divider that we've already named and make it a symbol, turn it into a symbol there. I just hit command K. So now we have the option. We have this showing up here, line item divider. Well, now we can just change that to none on the last line item. So now we have the divider showing on the first two, no divider showing on the bottom one, and we have a new symbol for the background, this new symbol back here. And remember the shadows are, are facing up and down, so it, it extends past those component edges. All right, what about, what about the images? Well, let's get into this thing. We haven't done the image yet. So for this avatar, I'm going to go ahead and hit Command K to turn that into a symbol. So now if I double click it, it will isolate that particular symbol. 
Now I went ahead and got some images set up here. So I'm just gonna vainly grab my avatar and put it in place. And that is way too big. So I'm gonna change it to 60 by 60 and put it in place right there. Now I want this thing to be a mask. So I'm gonna select the bottom shape and hit mask. So now this is an image. And if I hit return to instance, that's gonna be there. All right, and that's kind of, that's in the default two line symbol. So if I go back to the instance now, you can see that all of these are now me. And let me go back to this file to just grab a screenshot of the names here and replace that just so I can have a reference. So now that I've put that image in there and I've created that I've created that symbol with the image, now the symbol override is going to give me a choose image uh, option. Now that's been in place that choose image thing has been in place for a while. It's not new with nested symbols, but uh, it's still pretty powerful. So now I can go in here and say, all right, let me grab this image of Michael, change uh, the copy. Let's go ahead and change this while I'm here. There is there is quicker ways to put in actual con, uh, content with plugins like uh, Envision's Craft, but it always just kind of makes the layers a little bit jumbled, and I feel like I don't have a lot of control over the way it populates. So um, I don't use that particular function in Craft a lot, um, even though it is powerful. I still like to have a lot of control over the way these components are created. All right, so now I need new images of Ratu and an image of Adele. All right, so now you can see this is pretty much the same thing, but now my uh, the only catch with with kind of creating this is you need to make sure that you scale that background shape. Whoops. You need to make sure that you scale the background shape um, with the rest of your of your things. Whoops! Somehow my background shape got way out of place. Just put it there, scale it down, and send it to the bottom. So there. Now we have this group of avatars and this list. And somehow you can see that somehow Ratu's symbol doesn't have the uh, the divider. So let me just bring that back in. Um, and I would uh, Ratu, I, I changed it because I had three. So now I add four. So I just bring that back in. And it's kind of neat because always on the bottom one, typically the bottom line item would have like no border or no spacing or something. You know, it's going to be slightly different with the bottom one from the rest. Um, and that's possible because we have that line, that inner border is also a symbol that we can override with none. All right, so now we've, we've built this image. We've got the backgrounds, the dividers, the avatars. Um, if you wanted to have a symbol that wasn't like the same, the same face, you could just go ahead and design uh, like an icon version of like an empty avatar and export that as an image and then kind of re-import it to see, you know, to have that kind of default avatar as the component. I'm not gonna do that right now because I don't think it's as valuable to see that. Um, but what happens if we wanna go and create, let's say an iPhone 7 Plus, and we want all of these same symbols to work on an iPhone 7 Plus layout. Let me get a background color. So typically you would just wanna grab these things and scale it over. But now everything just got totally jacked up, not what we wanted to do. Well, that's because the title and the description width is set to auto. If we set both of these to fixed and make them kind of a little bit longer, 
so they would fit. Um, and actually, I might bring them in a, a little bit. So now I can go back in here and I can see. I can see that. You know now now everything's kind of working, but it looks like my icon here. To the discerning eye, you can see that this icon has stretched a little bit. And you can also tell that this Matt D. Smith is a little bit, um, the spacing is a little bit jacked up. And even these avatars are stretched. So if you contrast the way this one looks with that one, you can see this is more of like an oblong ellipse now. And everything's kind of a little bit off. Well, to handle that, Sketch has these resizing tools. So now I can it's going to stay on stretch. It's right here in the properties panel and it's going to stay on stretch by default. So most of the override, most of the resizing overrides that I change are going to be pinned to corner. That's just going to make that thing stay over there. It stays to the closest corner that it's currently in. So I'm going to change all of these items to pin to corner. So that way it won't resize. It'll only kind of stay in place. So now if I go back, I can see that uh, no, these avatars aren't getting stretched. This icon is not getting stretched. But for some reason, the the title and the description are getting, they're floating. Um, so what I'm going to do, let's change these back to auto width and keep them in pin to corner and see if that worked. All right. Apparently, auto width does work. It doesn't have to be fixed width. Um, I have noticed some instances where fixed width was necessary, but it looks like auto is possible. All right, so there's one more thing that's not quite working out, and that's the border bottom here. It's shifting over. Now, if we did pin to corner, it would change, and if we did stretch, we couldn't guarantee like where it was going to stay. But there's another option called resize object, and that will resize the object in its exact place. So now I'm going to go and go back to this thing and because now I've changed it to resize object you can see that that line and the text is all going to stay in the same place no matter how wide I make that avatar uh, line item alright so now these things are good to go if I wanted to make an iPad portrait and grab this whole thing Change the background so we can see a little bit of contrast. Whoops, that was wrong color. <coughs> now I can safely stretch these things all the way across. So there you have it. Scalable and reusable components inside of Sketch with symbols and nested symbol overrides. Um, Again, you can get in here and start changing these trophies. You can, you know, make them have none. You could do a lot of different things. You could get in here and you could, you could get in here and, you know, change the color of everything. You could change everything about this one component, one component, and it's going to change everywhere. Everywhere that it's scaled, everywhere that it's, you know, being used. And this is exactly the same way that you would code this as a design component, either in an iOS app or a web app, anything like that. Uh, and one last thing, if you wanted to uh, remember, if, if, you'll, if you remember looking back at uh, my original document that I had here, um, you can see that I've got another version that's got this desktop uh, view and I've got these rounded corners. Well, all I've done on that is use this exact same component for the line item, but I've created a new symbol for the background. So like in our other file, our background is called module background border top and bottom. So if I took this entire group and I grabbed like a large uh, desktop view and then I pasted this thing in, maybe I make this 320 or 375 pixels wide. Now I could grab this background and hit command option K to un, uh, ungroup the symbol, kind of detach from a symbol. That's actually a, a shortcut that I set up. You could also right click and hit detach from symbol right there. Detach from symbol. And I can get in here and I can just select the back 
take the shadows off and add a border to the outside. Remember, because we want our components to be able to cover it up safely and round the corners on this thing. So I've rounded the corners on the background and that's pretty much what I want. I'm gonna move, I move this component out of the way so I can see. And I wanna go ahead and create that as a symbol. But you'll notice that now these, uh, these components are covering up the rounded corner and I don't want that to happen. So instead of changing all of the components, again, because this is just one thing that we're using over and over, I can grab the background here and I can just change the fill from 100% white to 0% white. And also, don't forget we have a line item divider here with the with that border bottom. I wanna go into that one and change the white from 100% to zero as well. And so now, this is still here, the, cor the sharp corner is still there, but this is now kind of a backgroundless uh, symbol. And because we're planning on using these components with a kind of symboled background anyway, it's not gonna matter. And so now because that background is transparent, we can see the rounded edges through it. Well, that is gonna wrap it up for reusable and scalable components in Sketch. If you wanna download these files, I'm gonna put a link below. You can hop on my MDS VIP list and you can get access to all of these files, download them for free, and you'll get access to lots of other goodies as well. Um, that's it. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.